The magazine Guerin Sportivo is one of the most influential voices in Italian football. This year, it celebrates its centenary. Matteo Marani is editor. The Guerin title was created in 1912 by the head of a newspaper as a play on words about a satirical theatre production of the time, Guerin Meschino. They turned it into Guerin Sportivo as a way to carry that irony into the magazine as part of the sport. It's incredible that this magazine is still going after 100 years. It's been through two world wars, 10 popes, at least 50 Italian prime ministers, from the monarchy right through to the republic. Right from the beginning, the magazine was a publication which solely concerned itself with sport. It's a great traditional magazine here in Italy, and all the leading scribes of Italian sports journalism have written in its pages. There have been so many important journalists here. We were sent a personal message from the President of the Republic, a great compliment. He's very proud of this publication, and the message underlines the importance of the magazine, even considering the complexities of this country. It's not every day that a President sends his regards and admiration for a hundred years of publication. It shows the magazine has a place in the minds of the people of this country, and a place in Italian culture. I think it's difficult to label or define Guerin Sportivo. It has its own magic. It's a magazine that's been through many different eras, different times. It's changed its shape, its layout. It was a large format publication. And in 1975 it became a magazine. Now we're on iPad, on the web. Many other magazines that were born less than a century ago have ceased publication. And I think we made it because we maintain a very tight relationship with our readers. The readers of Guerin Sportivo are unique and knowledgeable, and the magazine has a cult following. We think in a different manner, and all the staff that work here do so by following rules of fair play, correctness, never hitting below the belt, addressing the most difficult of subjects, but always within certain limits, and always with real substance. In 1982 was a remarkable year for Italy because the national team was very poor and the Italian media was the first to criticise them. They said there was no future and the coach, Enzo Berzot, was seen as a joke by many journalists. There was a lot of politics and controversy at the time. No publications defended this squad. But Guerin's editor at the time, Italo Cucci, had a journalistic hunch, and he decided that Guerin Sportivo would openly support the national team, which was really suffering in the qualifying stages in Spain. And then something incredible happened. The team woke up and became a major force, beating Argentina, Brazil and Poland in the semi-finals, reaching the final and winning at the Bernabeu against West Germany. Guerin was overjoyed that it had been the only member of the media that had defended and supported the national team. And to this day, that edition is still the copy that sold the most. It sold 350,000, which was amazing. It's also been the only time Guerin sports Sportivo has worn a shirt, so to speak. One of the great strengths of the magazine is that it's never shown favouritism towards a single team like Milan, Inter, Juve, Torino, Bologna. It's always taken an independent view, but the only time we did wear a shirt, we backed the Azzurri of 1982 and they won the biggest trophy. I feel an enormous sense of responsibility. It doesn't let me sleep at night. And that's because this being the oldest magazine in the world adds an extra weight onto the shoulders of those in charge of it. Speaking for myself and all the people I work with, we regard this task as an honour, though we obviously know it's a tough time for magazines. I'm not sure what the format of Guerin Sportivo will be in the future, on which platform, iPad, on the web, but I think that in this case the actual media will be secondary. The important thing is that we keep our different way of looking at football alive. We look at the game with a shrewd and ironic eye, but we still have authority because that's the ethos of this publication. We want to be able to laugh about things but still maintain a serious outlook about the work we do.